Shalom, and welcome to another edition of The Truth Shall Make You Free. I'm your host, Elder Nathaniel, and on my right, Deacon Asaph. Today's topic, Are God's Laws Destroyed? But before we begin, let's open up with John chapter 8 and verse 32. John chapter 8, verse 32. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. So it's high time for every black man, black woman, Latin man, and Latin woman, children of the slave trade, to realize that you are the biblical Israelites. Let's open up with Deuteronomy 28 and verse 15. Okay? So I'll pose a question. We've got many letters, many emails, many calls. Are God's laws destroyed as your Christian churches teach? Deuteronomy 28 verse 15. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 15 But it shall come to pass If thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God To observe to do all his commandments All his what? All his commandments mm -hmm. And his statutes which I command thee this day That all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee So Moses told the Israelites If you break God's commandments All these curses will come upon you and overtake you Jump down to verse 32 Let's read about some of these curses Verse 32, thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. Did that happen to us? Were our sons and our daughters taken from us and given to another race of people? Yes. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people, and thine eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long. And there shall be no might in thine hand. We had no economic might, no military might to retrieve our sons and our daughters back as a nation again. Jump down to verse 37. Verse 37, and thou shalt become an astonishment and a proverb and a byword among all the nations whither the Lord shall lead thee. To be called a proverb and a byword literally means your nationality would be changed by your slave masters, okay? Did that happen to us as a people? Yes, our nationalities were all Change. No longer do they call you Judah, they call you American blacks. No longer do they call you Benjamin, they call you West Indian blacks. No longer do they call you Levites, they call you Haitian blacks. So forth and so on, as you can see on the 12 tribes sign. Jump down to verse 47. Now watch this, listen real good. Verse 47. Because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness, and with gladness of heart for the abundance of all things. Now what does that part mean? We didn't serve the Lord with joyfulness and gladness of heart. Joyfulness and gladness of heart pertaining to what? Verse 15 again. Verse 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments. To do all his what? To do all his commandments. Go back to verse 47. Verse 47. Because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness and with gladness of heart. We didn't have joyfulness and gladness of heart to keep the commandments. Okay? This is why the next verse says what it says. Keep reading. For the abundance of all things. What the earth? Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies. Therefore, because you refuse to keep the commandments with joyfulness and gladness of heart. Therefore you shall what? Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies. Therefore you shall serve the white man. Come on. Which the Lord shall send against thee. Because the Lord sent the white man against us. Come on. In hunger. And we have to serve the white man in hunger. Meaning for food. Come on. And in thirst. And in thirst we had to serve the white man. And in nakedness. And for clothing we had to serve the white man. And in want of all things. If we want anything, brothers and sisters, we have to serve our enemies. Today it is the so-called white man. No longer is it ancient Babylon. No longer is it ancient Persia or ancient media or ancient Greece or Rome. Today it's the United States of America. Okay, read that again. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness and in want of all things. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until you have destroyed Did we as a people have yokes of iron upon our neck? Yes. Were we destroyed as a people? Yes. Awake. Okay, we were destroyed mentally and spiritually. Now, from there, jump down to verse 68. Let's, let's end up with these curses. Verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. The word Egypt means bondage, meaning slavery. Read it again. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. With what? With ships. With what? With ships. With ships. Did that happen to us? Yes.
captivity on cargo slave ships. Come on. By the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies. And there, once we got off those ships, we would what? And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies. For bond men slave and bond men women. And slave women. Come on. And no man shall buy you. And no man shall save you. That's what that buy means. Save. Now, from there. Now you might ask yourself, what does this have to do with your question? Are God's laws destroyed? You must remember why we as a people went into slavery. Why? Because we broke God's laws. We broke his commandments. Now Deuteronomy chapter 30. Deuteronomy chapter 30. I'm building it up for you, okay? Deuteronomy 30, we're going to read 1 through 8. Watch the prophecy. Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 1. And it shall come to pass, when all these things are come upon thee, the blessings and the curse. What? Wait, 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 wait. And it shall come to pass when all things, all these things that come upon thee, the blessings. When did the blessings come on us as a people? During the time of David and Solomon. We had 80 years of being a top nation on earth. No nation could stand before us. Read it again. And it shall come to pass when all these things are come upon thee, the blessing and the curse. What are we living now? The curse. We read the curses. We're living that now. Come on. Which I have set before thee, and thou shalt call them to mind. And you shall call these curses to mind, like we just did at the beginning of the program. Come on. Among all the nations, whither the Lord thy God hath driven. So wherever you are, if you're viewing this program, whether you're in South Carolina, Georgia, Texas, Virginia, Argentina, Chile, Uruguay, Nicaragua, Panama, Haiti, or West Indies, it said we should what? Thou shalt call them to mind among all the nations whither the Lord thy God hath driven thee. Watch this. And shalt return unto the Lord thy God, and shalt obey his voice according to all that I command thee this day. So now when we call these curses to mind, we must come back and obey the voice of the Lord our God. Obey his voice based upon what? The commandments. Watch, come on. Thou and thy children will... Wait, wait, thou and who? Thou and thy children. So, black man, this ain't just about you. It's about you and your children. Understand that. Come on. Thou and thy children with all thine heart and with all thy soul, that then the Lord thy God will turn thy captivity and have compassion upon thee. It says then, when we do that, us and our children, then the Lord will turn our captivity. What does that mean? means deliver us. We're just going down to verse 8. Come on. And will return and gather thee from all the nations. What is the Lord going to do if we return and keep his commandments? And will return and gather thee from all the nations. He's going to gather us in all from all the nations. Whether the Lord thy God hath scattered thee. Where he has scattered us. Come on. If any of thine be driven out unto the utter, outmost parts of heaven. If any of our seed, our sons and daughters, have been driven and scattered to the utmost parts of the sea. From thence will the Lord thy God gather thee. The Lord promised to gather our sons and our daughters wherever they're scattered. What verse is that? Four. Come on. And from thence will he fetch thee. Mm -hmm. And the Lord thy God will bring thee into the land which thy fathers possessed. You hear that? And then the Lord said he would bring us into the land which our fathers possessed. What land is that prophesying about? The land of Israel. The promised land. Come on. And then the Lord thy God will bring thee into the land which thy fathers possess, and thou shalt possess it, and he will do thee good and multiply thee above thy fathers. Come on. And the Lord thy God will circumcise thine heart and the heart of thy seed to love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul that thou mayest live. And the Lord thy God will put all these curses upon thine enemy. So all the curses that we as the Israelites suffered, he promised in this prophecy to put all those curses on our enemies. That's right. The white man's going to have yokes of iron on his neck. That's right. The Arabs and the Africans, too, are going to have yokes of iron on their necks. They're going to be in slave ships. Okay, understand that God is a just God. Come on. And the Lord thy God will put all these curses upon thy enemies and on them that hate thee, which persecuted thee. And thou shalt return and obey the voice of the Lord, and do all his commandments. And do all his what? And do all his commandments, which I commanded thee this day. Was that verse 8? Verse 8. That's letting you know we must come back and keep the command. That's the prophecy. That has not happened yet. Okay? For all you churchgoers talking about God's laws is destroyed. You are some foolish Negroes and Latinos. Watch this. Let's get more proof. 
Matthew 5, verse 17. Matthew, let's get to the words of Jesus the Christ. Come on. Matthew chapter 5, verse 17. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophet. Christ said, think not, meaning don't get it twisted. Don't get it in your little head that he came to destroy the law. Or what? Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophet. Meaning don't think Christ came to destroy nothing the prophets prophesied about. Like what we just read in Deuteronomy 30 verse 1 through 8. Christ didn't come to destroy that. Come on. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Christ, what does it mean he come to fulfill? He's going to make sure everything written is fulfilled. Now you've got a lot of dumb church people out there, a whole lot, who go around saying, see, the law is fulfilled. We don't got to keep the law. You are ignorant and foolish. What does it mean fulfill? I'm going to show you. Get Luke 24. Now you at home, get your Bibles, your pens and papers, take notes. Luke 24, we want verse 44 to 46. What did Christ mean when he says, I have not come to destroy the law or the prophets, but to fulfill the law and the prophets? Watch this. Luke 24, verse 44. Mm -hmm. And he said unto them, These are the words which I spoke unto you while I was yet with you, that all these things must be fulfilled. Which, all these things must be fulfilled. Which were written in the law of Moses. Which were written in the law of Moses. And in the prophets. And in the prophets. And in the Psalms. And in the Psalms. Concerning me. Concerning what? Concerning me. So meaning what? Christ came to fulfill everything written concerning him. Understand that. Because you dumb church ministers go, we could be adulterers now. We could be thieves and liars now because Christ fulfilled the law. You, that's why the white man calls you a bunch of niggas. That's why he calls our people niggas. Because you don't get no dumber than a church minister. Just dumb as hell. So now, watch this. He said he came to fulfill those things which were written concerning him. Correct? Correct. Let's watch Psalms 22, please. I'm giving you some basic examples on what was written in the law of Moses and in the Psalms concerning Christ that he came to fulfill. Psalms 22, verse 16 to 18. Psalms 22, verse 16. For dogs have compassed me. The assembly of wicked have enclosed me. They pierce my hands and my feet. They pierce my hands and my feet. Talking about crucifixion. Go ahead. I may tell all my bones. They look and stare upon me. Mm -hmm. They part my garments among them and cast lots upon my vesture. So the prophecy is that they would pierce his hands and his feet. Okay. They would part his garments. Was that fulfilled? Go to Matthew 27 verse 35. Did Christ fulfill that prophecy? Okay. Because like, oh, I don't know. Matthew 27, verse 35. Matthew 27, verse 35. And they crucified him. What? And they crucified him. That's why you've got to know a little bit about history. When the Romans instituted crucifixion, how did they do it? They pierced your hands and your feet with a long nail. Understand that. That's historically accurate. That's what they did. Read it again. And they crucified him and parted his garments, casting lots, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet. They parted my garments among them, and upon my vesture did they cast lots. So Christ came to make sure the fulfillment was accomplished, what was written in Psalms 22. Here's another one. Watch this. Let, give me Leviticus 9 and 3. I'm going to show you something. I'm going to show you something deep. I'm going to show you something spiritual right now. Leviticus chapter 9, verse 3. Watch this. Leviticus chapter 9, verse 3. 41 is verse 3. And unto the children of Israel thou shalt speak, saying, Take ye a kid of goats for a sin offering, and a calf and a lamb. And a what? And a calf and a lamb. And a lamb. Go ahead. Both of the first year, without blemish, mm. for a burnt offering. So now. Now that was the beginning of that sin. So what kind of offering was it? A burnt offering. From the beginning of that verse. And it came to pass, um, verse 3 again. Yeah. And unto the children of Israel thou shalt speak, saying, Take ye a kid of the goats for a sin offering. Sin offering. This burnt offering was a sin offering that you would take, uh, I said, a calf. A calf and a lamb. And a lamb. Now, watch this. Go to John. St. John chapter 1 and verse 29. I'm going to show you something spiritual because you're looking at that. Go take a calf or a lamb and a lamb, huh? John chapter 1, verse 29. Watch what John the Baptist said. John chapter 1, verse 29. 
The next day John seeth Jesus coming unto him and saith, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. So John saw Christ and said, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sins of the world, meaning the world of Israel. Why did they call Christ the Lamb of God? Because he was fulfilling the law that was written in Leviticus about a sin offering. You had to get a lamb, okay? Understand that. So now from there, somebody at home right now is being dumb. No, a man can't die because you got these dumb Israelites that reject Christ talking about a man can't sacrifice himself. You simple as hell. Isaiah 53 and verse 10 and 11. We want Isaiah 53 verse 10 and 11. What I'm showing you now is what Christ said. I'm not come to destroy the law or the prophets. I've not come to destroy but to fulfill. Isaiah 53 verse 10 and 11. Isaiah 53 verse 10. Watch this. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. When thou shalt make his soul what? An offering for sin. An offering for sin. An offering for sin. What did John the Baptist say? Behold the Lamb of God which taketh away the sins of the world. Understand that. Keep going. He shall see his seed. And he shall prolong his days. Come on. And the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. Watch this. He shall see of the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteous servants justify many. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many. Many. That's talking about Christ. Come on. For he shall bear their iniquity. He shall what? He shall bear their iniquity. How can a man bear the iniquities of a nation? That's what John said, behold the Lamb of God. Because when you're reading the history about the sin offering, what did you have to do? Lay your hands upon the, uh, the animal and then slay the animal, confessing your sin, okay? So now, was that verse 11? That was verse 11. Now go to John chapter 19, verse 30. John chapter 19 and verse 30, okay? John chapter 19, verse 30. When Jesus, therefore, had received the vinegar, he said, it is finished. He said, it is finished. That's when he died upon the cross. He said, it is finished. What was finished? Him fulfilling what was written about him concerning his coming upon earth and dying for the 12 tribes of Israel as a sacrifice. He said, it is finished. What was finished? What was written about him coming and dying for Israel. That was finished. Now let's go back to Matthew 5. Matthew 5, verse 17 again. We're going to read 17 down to 19 now. Okay? Are the laws of, are the laws of God destroyed? <laughs> Matthew 5, verse 17. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy but to fulfill. So Christ didn't come to destroy nothing in the law and nothing in the prophets. But he did come to fulfill what? What was written about him sacrificing himself for the nation of Israel, okay? And the law pertaining to what? Sacrifice, sacrifice, sacrifice. Read on. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass. Till heaven and earth pass. I don't know about you, but I still, I'm, we standing on earth. We look up and heaven is all around us. Read it again. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Till all be fulfilled. Has all been fulfilled yet? No. No, all has not been fulfilled because Christ has not made his second coming yet. All has not been fulfilled yet. The white man is in slavery yet, so all has not been fulfilled. We're still in captivity here. So the fulfillment has not come for us being delivered from Babylon the Great. Read that verse again, verse 18. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Next verse. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments. Stop right there. Whosoever shall break one of these least commandments. Least commandments. Hold on. Give me the Leviticus 1927. I'm going to give you a least commandment. Leviticus 19, is it 27? What the be it? Um, yeah, right. That's what I want. Give me that law. I'm going to show you something. Whoso shall break the least, I'm going to give you a least commandment, or what you may think is the least commandment. Leviticus chapter 19, verse 27. 27. 
He shall not round the corners of your head. Meaning what? Make baldness upon your head. Neither shalt thou mar the corners of thy beard. Meaning shave off the corners of your beard. You heard that one law? That law, right? That least law? That a lot of you black men who run around and teach others to break that. Go back to Matthew now. That's the least law. Okay? Read it again. Matthew 5, 19. Matthew 5, 19. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments. Like you at home, you brothers, you break that least commandment. You shave the hair off your head, and some of you shave off your beards. Go ahead. And shall teach men so. Now some of you say, I never teach men to do that. I don't teach that. You teach by example. If you walk around the streets with no hair on your face or your head, you are teaching your youth and other brothers to break that law. Understand that. Read it again. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. You shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. Mean, what does that part mean? It means you ain't going to make it. it means you're just going to be a bad thought. Understand that. So don't think you can break God's laws and you making it to the kingdom. Christ said you're going to be the least in the kingdom, meaning you're going to be dead. What happened to daddy? Daddy died. Daddy was put to death. Come on. But whosoever shall do and teach them. Stop. But whosoever shall do and teach them. Whosoever shall do what and teach what? Read from the top again, verse uh, 19, 18. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one title, shall in no wise pass from the law. So we're discussing the law. Till all be fulfilled. Come on. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments. So the commandments is the law. And shall teach men so, mm -hmm. he shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. Come on. But whosoever shall do... Whosoever shall do what? Do the law and teach the law. Do the commandments, teach the commandments. Read it again. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. So what are we commanded to teach by Jesus the Christ? What are we commanded to teach? The law and the commandments. The law and the commandments. So what in blazes... Are you pork chop eating preachers teaching? Are you teaching the law? Are you teaching the commandments? No. And all you blacks and Latinos that follow those ministers that go around you, the God's laws are destroyed. You better head for the hills. You better run. Okay? Was that it on that? Verse yeah. 19? From there, go to 2nd Ezra in the Apocrypha. 2nd Ezra. Shop. So Christ, Christ never said the laws are destroyed. So where'd you get that from? I'm going to tell you where you got it from. You got it from your slave master, okay? And your ministers got it from your slave masters. So now, from there, let's go to the Apocrypha, 2nd Ezra, chapter 9, verse 37. 2nd Ezra, chapter 9, verse 37. Notwithstanding, the law perisheth not. What? The law perisheth not. So you ask the question, are God's laws destroyed? Christ said no. Don't even think it. What did Ezra say? Notwithstanding, the law perisheth not. The law does not perish. Come on. But remaineth in force. But remaineth in force. But remaineth in force. The law perisheth not, but remaineth in force. I hope you understand that, you black men and Latin men. You black women and Latin women. From there, let's go to John, chapter 1, verse 17. St. John, chapter 1, and verse 17. Watch this. Okay. John chapter 1, verse 17. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Now there's a dumb preacher jumping up and down going, see, 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 read it again. For the law was given by Moses. The law was given by Moses. But grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. But grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Now grace, literally broken down, means what? What does grace mean? It means mercy. So mirth, grace and truth came by Jesus Christ, meaning mercy and truth. What is truth? Hold on. Psalms 119 verse 142, because a lot of you say you got the truth. Jesus is the truth, like it says in John. Yes, but in that truth, it's mentioned something else. Psalms 119 verse 142. Watch this. Here's the precept. Write it down. Psalms 119 verse 142. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is the truth. Read that again. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, 
And thy law is the truth. And thy law is the truth. Thy law is the truth. Thy law is the truth. Back to John 1 now. Now we got a better understanding on what was John talking about. John 1 verse 17. John 1 verse 17. For the law was given by Moses. The law was given by Moses. But grace. But grace meaning mercy. And truth. And truth. What is truth? Thy law is truth. Thy law is truth. So mercy and the law. For the law was given by Moses. But grace and truth. But mercy and the law. And truth came by Jesus Christ. Came by Jesus Christ. Mercy and the law came by Jesus Christ. Read the verse again slow. For the law was given by Moses. The law was given by Moses. But grace. But mercy. And truth. And the law. Came by Jesus Christ. Came by Jesus Christ. Understand that. Understand what's being written. What's being said. From there. Let's go to Matthew 5. Verse 14. Matthew 5 and verse 14. Watch this. Here's a famous thing they read in the churches too. Matthew chapter 5 verse 14. Mm -hmm. Ye are the light of the world. Ye are the light of the world. Go ahead. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Read it again. Ye are the light of the world. Stop. What does Christ mean? You are the light of the world. Because you got every dumb little child in church talking about this little light of mine I'm going to let it shine you don't know what you're singing hold on Proverbs 6 and 23 what does it mean you are the light of the world what does it mean to every black man Latin man, black woman and Latin woman watch this Proverbs chapter 6 verse 23 for the commandment is a lamp and the law is a light the law is what? the law is light for the commandment is a lamp and the law is light. The law is light. Back to Matthew 5, verse 14. Now we understand. Let me get some understanding here. Come on. Matthew 5, verse 14. Ye are the light of the world. Why are we the light of the world? Because we teach God's laws. We live God's laws. Read it again. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Why do he call us a city that is set on a hill? What did Christ mean about that? Huh? Isaiah 2. I'm going to show you what he meant in the spirit about a city that is set upon a hill cannot be hid. Come on. Isaiah 2 verse 1 through 5. Isaiah chapter 2 verse 1. The word that Isaiah the son of Amar saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. And it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountain. What does it mean the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains? Meaning the nation of Israel shall be exalted above all governments on the earth. Go ahead. And shall be exalted above the hills. Come on. And all nations shall flow unto it. Now that's the part right there you get tripped up on. And all nations shall flow unto it. Get Jeremiah 50 verse 4 and 5. Jeremiah chapter 50 verse 4. In those days and in that time, saith the Lord, the children of Israel shall come, they and the children of Judah together. The children of Israel shall come, they and the children of Judah together. Together. Come on. Going and weeping they shall go. Going and weeping we shall go. And seek the Lord their God. And seek the Lord our God. They shall ask the way to Zion with their faces thitherward, saying, Come and let us join ourselves to the Lord in a perpetual covenant that shall not be forgotten. See what we're going to say? Come and let us join ourselves unto the Lord in a perpetual covenant. Go back to Isaiah. Isaiah 2, the verse you left off at. Isaiah chapter 2, verse 3. Come on. And many people shall go and say, Come ye and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord. So who's that? Judah and Israel, the two kingdoms. Come on. Come ye and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob. And he will teach us of his ways. Watch this. And, he will, and we will walk in his path. For out of Zion shall go forth the law. Read that again. For out of Zion shall go forth the law. Read it again. For out of Zion shall go forth the law. So what are we going to teach in the kingdom? The law. The law. That's why Christ said, a city which is set upon a hill cannot be hid. Why? Because we shall let our light shine. What is our light? The law. What does the prophecy say? Read that part again. For out of Zion shall go forth the law. That's what's going to be taught. So you ministers that's running around talking about God's laws are destroyed, time for you to shut up and humble down and repent. Okay, what verse you at? Uh, still in three. Go ahead. Here's the last part. 
and the word of the Lord from jo from Jerusalem. Okay. And it shall and he shall judge among the nations and shall rebuke many people. This is how you know that part above it ain't talking about all the other races coming up to Jerusalem because it said he shall judge among the nations and what's going to happen? And shall rebuke many people. He, the Lord is going to rebuke these nations of people and they shall beat their swords into plowshares. All their weapons going to be built into plowshares. What is a plowshare? A farming instrument. Why are they going to have farming instruments? Because they're going to be servants. Slaves! Go ahead. And their spares into pruning hooks. What is a pruning hook? Another farming instrument. They ain't going to be learning war no more. Was that it? Nations shall not lift up sword against nation. Neither shall they learn war anymore. When we're set up as a nation of people, then will there be peace upon the earth. From there, let's now go. John 14. John chapter 14. Because you know what happens next? Now that you're getting cut in the scriptures about the laws not destroyed, you know what you jump to now and go... Love. Where's the love of Jesus? We got the love. That's what you do. A lot of you black women right now, I hear you. I love. What about love? See, there's something wrong with them, brother. They never talk about love. You don't know nothing about love. You've never experienced love. You've never taught love. Okay? John 14 and 15. John chapter 14, verse 15. Come on. If ye love me, keep my commandments. What did Christ say? If ye love me, keep my commandments. So do you black men and Latin men? Black women and Latin women, do you love the Lord? Do you love the black Messiah called Jesus the Christ? Because if you did, you would keep the commandments. I'm going to say it again. If you did, you would keep the commandments. Read that part again. If ye love me, keep my commandments. So what does that prove? That you have never loved the Lord. You've never loved the Lord with all your lip service because you don't keep commandment one. Keep going. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. What is this comforter that we're going to be given? The Holy Spirit. Read it again. Read 15 and 16 together. If you love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. So what's the stipulation for getting the Holy Spirit? You must be keeping the commandments. That's what Christ said. Read it again. If ye love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. So you got these dumb black men and black women at church talking about, I got the Holy Spirit. Hand me a pork chop. I got the Holy Spirit. You know, you commit adultery, you're a bunch of liars. You keep the wrong holidays. You don't keep no holidays that the Bible commands, but you got the Holy Spirit. You a bunch of liars. Every last one of you. Okay? Now jump down to verse 21. Verse 21. Watch this. He that hath my commandments. He and, that hath my commandments. And keepeth them. And what? And keepeth them. He is that loveth me. That's the one that loves the Lord. If you have the commandments and you keep the commandments. That's the one that loved the Lord. From there, jump to verse 26. Watch this. Verse 26. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost. Whom the Father will send in my name. Whom the Father will send in my name. That's the spirit of truth. Go ahead. He shall teach you all things. He shall teach you all things. And bring all things to your remembrance. And bring all things to your remembrance. Whatsoever I have said unto you. Whatsoever I have said unto you. Bring all things to our remembrance like what? Who we are. What's our nationality? What happened to us as a people? Why did we as a people suffer, die in bondage and slavery? Why? Why? The comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, would bring all things to your remembrance. So what does this prove, black woman? You've never had the Holy Spirit. You've never had the comforter in your life. Okay? That's why you go, who are you, black woman in the church? I'm a child of God. That's all I know. I'm a child. I'm a Baptist. <laughs> Uh, you don't know. Who are you, black minister in the church? Oh, I'm a child of God. Hand me a pork chop. You don't know who you are. So the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, has revealed nothing to you. Brought nothing to your remembrance. Understand that. From there, let's go to 1 John 5. And we ain't done with this love kick. Because a lot of you are on a love kick. You think that the Bible is about sex, hugs, and kisses. Where's the love of Jesus? You just got to love. Christ said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Watch this. Five, 1 John chapter 5, verse 3. 1 John 5, verse 3. 
For this is the love of God. Uh oh, this is the love of God. Let's see if it says sex, hugs, and kisses. That we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not grievous. So what's love? Read that again. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. So you don't know the love of God. You don't know the love of God. Understand that. Now 2 John verse 6. 2 John verse 6. And this is love. And this is love. Let's see if it says that sex, we, hugs, and kisses. That we walk after his commandments. This is the commandment that as ye have heard from the beginning, you should walk in it. Read it again. And this is love, that we walk after his commandments. This is the commandment that as ye have heard from the beginning, ye should walk in so it. So you have never learned about love. Never. You and all those churches you're sitting in, your mega churches, you've never learned about love. But today is your day. From there, let's go to Ecclesiasticus in the Apocrypha. Chapter 1. Because now that you understand, now you understand what love is, you see, a lot of you thought you had the understanding, but you're realizing now, you don't have the understanding of what God is all about, what the Bible is all about, okay? How do you get the understanding of what the Bible is really talking about? How do you gain that understanding? I'm going to give you the keys to the kingdom right here in Christ. Ecclesiasticus and the Apocrypha, chapter 1, verse 26. Ecclesiastes 1 verse 26 If thou desire wisdom Keep the commandments If you desire wisdom what? Keep the commandments Do you brothers and sisters hear that? If you desire That's why right. Now that explains why niggas are dumb as hell Because they've never desired wisdom They always go What the white man got to say? And Joel, did Joel Osteen say it? No sister Joel Osteen didn't say it Then I don't want to hear it You <laughs> bunch of dummies Read it again if thou desire wisdom, keep the commandments, and the Lord shall give her unto thee. Do you hear the stipulation? If you desire wisdom, keep the commandments, and the Lord shall give her unto thee. From there, go to Psalms 111. Hope we're, going, we're going right back here. Psalms 111 and verse 10. Because some of you right now are going, well, I don't know about that apocrypha thingy, because my minister never told me about that apocrypha thingy. Look up the word apocrypha. Look up, I Google King James Version 1611. It will teach you and tell you that a, the Apocrypha was originally in the original King James Version Bible in 1611. It was taken out in the early 1700s by your slave masters. That's right. Now, Psalms 111 verse 10. Psalms 111 verse 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Now watch this. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. A good understanding have all they that do, that do, that do his commandments. Read that again. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. Do you hear that? See, you didn't know that was in the Bible, did you? You did not know to get the understanding of what this Bible is about. You must start keeping the commandments. You got to start somewhere. It's high time for us to wake up out of sleep. It's high time for us to come out of that low, base, ignorant nigger state. It's high time. Go back to the Apocrypha. Ecclesiasticus chapter 21. I want chapter 21 and verse 11. Okay? Ecclesiasticus chapter 21 verse 11. Ecclesiasticus chapter 21 verse 11. He that keepeth the law of the Lord getteth the understanding wait, wait, thereof. Wait, read that again. He that keepeth the law of the Lord getteth the understanding thereof. Brother, I'm so confused when I read the Bible. Some parts it sounds like Paul is saying don't keep the law. Some parts he's saying keep the law. And who are the Gentiles? I don't know who the Gentiles are. I'm confused on what to do. This Bible is confusing. Read it again. He that keepeth the law Get it the understanding thereof. You brothers and sisters need to understand that. He that keepeth the law getteth the understanding. From there, let's go to Romans 1. We're going to go to Romans 1 because you know what comes in the life of a Negro and a Latino? One word. It's called excuses. That's the pastime for ignorance, all right? If, you don't, if a Negro don't want to do something, he will find an excuse. Watch this. Here's one excuse. Well, there's so many things. You know, what about the Big Bang Theory, brother? Didn't we come from orangutan? You might have came from orangutan. You know? But let's see what the Bible says. Romans 1, verse 20. Romans 1, verse 20. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen. For the invisible things of the world from the creation are clearly seen. Like what? The sun, moon, and stars. 
You got the wind, you got trees, you got all these things you see in nature. Go ahead. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world. Right, it's invisible because you didn't see the Lord create these things. Are clearly seen. The things that God created are clearly seen. Being understood by things that are made. Being understood by things that are made. You see all this around you in the, in the earth. Go ahead. Even his eternal power and Godhead. So that they are without excuse. Our people are what? Without excuse. Our people are without excuse. Because we love, you know why I'm saying that? Because a nigga loves to make an excuse. Of why they don't do certain laws. Well, brother, you know. Okay? From there, watch this. Go to John 15, verse 22. I'm going to show you something. With all your excuses. The Bible says you are without excuse. So don't think when Christ returns, you're, gonna, you're just going to befuddle him with excuses. You simple as hell. John chapter 15, verse 22. John chapter 15, verse 22. If I had not come and spoken unto them, they had not had sin. Christ said, if I had not come and spoken unto the Israelites, they would have not had sin. But now they have no cloak for their sin. But now they have no cloak for their sin. What does that mean, no cloak? No excuse. No excuse. Because Christ came and he taught what? The law. The law understand that. He says you don't have excuses now because prior to Christ you could have had an excuse because you had the lying Pharisees and scribes and Sadducees with their doctrines the Stoics, the Epicureans but Christ came on the scene and he taught our people right from wrong he taught us the laws on how to live all these things he taught us so we have no cloak for our sin that's what he was letting us know from there let's go to the Apocrypha Ecclesiasticus chapter 32 and verse 17. Okay. So brothers and sisters, please, I need you to be patient. Take your time, write these notes, okay? Ecclesiasticus chapter 32, verse 17. Ecclesiasticus chapter 32, verse 17. A sinful man will not be reproved, but findeth an excuse according to his will. Ooh, read that again. A sinful man will not be reproved. A sinful man will not be reproved means will not be corrected. A sinful man will not be corrected, but findeth an excuse according to his will. But finds an excuse, but finds an excuse, but finds an excuse according to his will. What you know how the guy explain excuses? He said excuses are nothing but reasons filled with lies. That's all it is. Every time I hit it, I got to laugh. Because a Negro's good for making an excuse of why he's in the midst of sin, why he hates God, why he won't do nothing the Bible says. He's filled with excuses. Okay, from there, go to um, Proverbs 28. I'm going to show you something. Okay, I'm going to show you something. And don't take my passion for hatred. My passion is love for you, love for the Most High and His Son, Jesus the Christ. Proverbs chapter 28, verse 4. Proverbs 28, verse 4. They that forsake the law. They that forsake the law, meaning they won't do the law. Praise the wicked. Who do they praise? Praise the wicked. That's why you love the white man. Understand it. That's why you love your slave master, the white man. Read it again. They that forsake the law, praise the wicked. Praise white man Jesus. Praise his name. Praise his name. Praise his name. That's what you do in church. That's what you do in school. That's what you do in the political arena. You praise the white man. You forsake God's laws. Okay, was that it on that verse? But such as keep the law. But such as keep the law. Contend with them. We contend with the wicked. We go against everything the so-called white man has taught our people. Why? Because we keep the law. We contend with him. Okay? From there, stay right there. Jump down to verse 9. Verse 9. He that turneth away his ear from hearing the law. You don't want to hear nothing the Bible got to say. We say, woman, black woman, cover your behind up. Get out of those pants and put on a dress and be feminine according to the law. Deuteronomy 22 and 5. And the black woman goes, la, 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 la. I don't want to hear nothing the law says. I don't want to hear it. Read it again. He that turneth away his ear from hearing the law. Brothers and sisters, stop eating pork. Stop eating sh uh, shrimp, scallop. Uh, crab meat, and you go, oh, no, 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 no. I don't want to hear that law. I gotta say, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. Read it again. He that turneth away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayers shall be abomination. Your prayers are abomination. You turn away your ears from hearing the laws of God, the Bible says your prayers are abomination. So, what does that mean? The Lord ain't hearing your prayers. 
Well, then, brother, who blessed me? I'm eating this pork chop and I got a new Maserati. Do you ever hear, ever, ever hear of somebody called Satan? You ever hear that guy? Huh? That spiritual demon Satan? Because what did Satan tell Christ? He said, if you bow down and worship me, all these things will I give unto you. Okay, there was a stipulation. You got to do what the devil say do. What is it? Let me get that. Yeah. Luke chapter 4, verse 6. And the devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee, and the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me, and to whomsoever I will, I give it. If thou therefore will worship me, all shall be thine. You hear the simple? So you got two spirit, two powerful beings in the earth. Satan saying, if you do what I say, I'll bless you. And Christ is saying, if you do what I say, I'll bless you. So you brothers and sisters, whatever you've got, it's not been because you've kept the commandments. Uh-uh. Oh, no, 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 no. Your ministers with all their money and all that, your mega churches, they ain't teaching nothing this Bible says. They twist the scriptures. Back to Proverbs now. Watch this. What verse you just read? Um, that was nine, nine, right? Nine. Read verse 13. Watch this. Proverbs 9, verse 13. No, 28, verse 13. Proverbs 28, 13. Sorry. He that covereth his sins shall not prosper. He that covereth his sins shall not prosper. He that covereth his sins shall not prosper. What does that mean, covereth his sins? I'm confused. Oh, you, again, you're confused because you don't keep the commandments. <laughs> so when it says he that covereth his sins, it means he that makes excuses for his sins. I'm going to say it again. He that covereth his sins means he that makes excuses for his sins. Read it again. He that covereth his sins shall not prosper. So you will not prosper means you will not inherit the kingdom of heaven on earth. But whoso confesseth and forsake them shall have mercy. But the Lord wants us to confess our sins and forsake our sins, meaning stop doing the sin, stop breaking the commandments, we shall have mercy. Understand that. From there, Matthew 19. Matthew 19. So we're still dealing with the topic. I don't want you to forget. Are God's laws destroyed? A lot of you should know the answer now. No! They're not destroyed. But in case you're still confused, how do you get eternal life? How do you get salvation? Let's find out what Christ said. Matthew 19. Let's read verse 16 to 19. Matthew 19, verse 16. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I might have eternal life? So a guy came up to Christ, an Israelite came to Christ. He said, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I might have eternal life? Eternal life means what? Inheriting the kingdom of heaven on earth. That's the eternal life. The blessings and the glory. Understand that. Read it again. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? Come on. And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? Christ said, What you calling me good for? Mm -hmm. There is none good but one. There is none good but one. That is God. He says, Christ says, Give all credit to the Heavenly Father. Come on, watch this. But if thou wilt enter into light. What verse you at? 17. Go ahead. But if thou wilt enter into light. Read it again. But if thou wilt enter into light. Keep the commandments. Hugs and kisses. Keep the commandments. Uh, say the sinner's prayer. Keep the commandments. Uh, do you hear what the Bible says? Do you hear what Christ the King is saying? If you will have eternal life, keep the commandments. How come your preachers never taught you that? What verse was that? 17. Now keep reading down. He Read, said, reading down to 19. He saith unto him, which? Now Christ is going to break it down for this particular man right here. Because Christ knows us all. So for this man, he's going to tell him what he should do. Go ahead. Jesus said, Thou shalt do no murder. Mm. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Mm. Thou shalt not steal. Sounds like the commandments to me. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Mm -hmm. Honor thy father and thy mother. Mm -hmm. And thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. What verse you at? 19. Go ahead. The young man said unto him, All these things have I kept from my youth up. So this young man says, All these things have I kept from my youth up. So when you read on, Christ tells this man who was rich, sell all that you have and give to the poor. Okay, and the man, he went away sorrowful. But the point of this was, the stipulation for getting eternal life, getting the kingdom of heaven, is keeping the commandments. From there, let's go to 1 Timothy 9. Now this is, uh, there's something, that, I'm going to 1 Timothy chapter 1, that's what I want. 1 Timothy chapter 1, because a so-called preacher, a black Negro preacher, wrote us a letter and said that um, 
he believes that you don't got to keep God's laws. So I gave him this verse. I'm going to tell you, as he starts to read, I'm going to tell you what the Negro wrote me back and said. 1 Timothy 1 verse 9. Mm -hmm. Knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man. What? That the law is not made for a righteous man. The Negro wrote me back concerning this and says, see that brother? You've proven what I said. He said the law is not made for a righteous man and me brother, I am righteous. I must have, I, I, I fell off the bed. First I started laughing. Then I got so daggone mad. I said, what is wrong? The, the, a Negro is a phenomenon. It's a strange <laughs> creature. Okay. Read that again. You got something for me? What righteousness is. Deuteronomy 6 verse 25. And it shall be our righteousness if we observe to do all these commandments before the Lord our God as he commanded us. Right. That's what makes you righteous in the eyesight of the Lord in Christ. Okay. So read this again. Knowing this. That the law is not made for a righteous man. So the Negroes told me he was righteous. Simple as hell. Wicked Negro. Finding excuses. Come on. But for the lawless and disobedient. Now let's see if this fits blacks and Hispanics. It said the law was not made for the righteous, but for lawless and disobedient. I don't know about what Bible y'all reading, but according to the Holy Bible, the Israelites, which are you blacks and Latinos, from the beginning have been disobedient and stiff-necked people. Hard-headed and rebellious. That's what the Bible says. So read that part again. But for what? Knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man, but for the lawless and disobedient. Now he's going to break it down for you. For the ungodly. Are black people ungodly? Heck yeah. We're ungodly people. We worship false images. Some of us are Muslims worshiping rocks. Some of us are Buddhists. Yes, we are ungodly. Come on. And for sinners. And for sinners, meaning those that break the commandments. For unholy, for and unholy profane. and profane. Do we are we all profane people? Do we walk? Does your sons walk around with their pants below their butt? Yes, they are profane. Come on. For murderers of fathers. Are are people murderers of fathers? Look on the news. Do black men shoot one another down in the streets? They're murderers of fathers. Go ahead. And murderers of mothers. Do they shoot black women and black women down in the streets? Yes, they're murderers of mothers too. For manslayers. For manslayers. They kill their sons and daughters. For whoremongers. Are, are, we, whorem are we a whoremonger people? There's a white woman called, uh, what's her name? Margaret Sanger. She the devil the Bible speaks of. But one thing she said about black people, she created plain hat. And we're going to go at that in another lesson. But she said, blacks and Latinos are irresponsible breeders. Irresponsible breeders. So now we can find fault with that, but then when let's examine it, let's take her out the equation. Are blacks and Latinos, are, do we just go around, are we whoremongers just having sex? And do black women and Latin women use abortion for birth control? A lot of them do, yes. Do they use the patch so that they don't get pregnant so they can keep having sex upon sex? Yes, whoremongers. Read again. For whoremongers. For them that defile themselves with mankind. Meaning homosexuals. Are black men homosexuals? Oh, some of them are. Latin men, some of them are. Uh huh, come on. For men stealers. For liars. For liars. For perjurers. Perjurer means you go to court, you know the truth, but you're going to lie anyway. For perjured persons, and if there be any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine. So if there's anything contrary to sound doctrine, the law is made for that man, that woman. So is the law made for us? See, that's where repenting comes in. You gotta acknowledge that you need the law. You gotta acknowledge that in Christ, you need to keep the commandments. Because you at one time, you was that adulterer, you was that whoremonger, that liar, that thief, that murderer. Come on. According to the glorious gospel of Wait, wait, read that again. According to the glorious gospel. Read it again. According to the glorious gospel. So the law is according to the glorious gospel. I need all you brothers and sisters to understand that. The laws of God are what? According to the glorious gospel. Are according to the glorious gospel. Go ahead. Of the blessed God. So now from there, let's go to um, 1 Timothy 1, verse 10 and 11. Did you read down to 11? Um, what verse that was 11. It? Okay, that was 11. Go to John 9, verse 39. St. John chapter 9 and verse 39, okay? Because you know what happens? A lot of people say, oh, I got, I, I got the truth, brothers. I say, I know. I, I, I know everything. See, you blacks and Latinos that think you know everything, watch what Christ said. John 9, verse 39. 
And Jesus said, For judgment I am come into this world, that they would see not my that way see. that they would see not. Meaning they don't our people that acknowledge they don't that they don't see, they mean that they don't see the truth in the Bible. Read it again. For judgment I am come into the world, that they would see not might see. And they would see might be blind. And they would see might be blind. Meaning, when it says Christ said you see, you might be blind because you think you see everything. Meaning, you think you know everything. Go ahead. And some of the Pharisees which were with him heard these words and said unto him, Are we blind also? Like a lot of you say. Go ahead. Jesus said unto them, If you were blind, if you were blind, if you acknowledged you were blind, you should have no sin. You would have no sin. Go ahead. But now you say, we see. Now you say you see everything. You know everything. Therefore, your sin remaineth. Therefore, your sin remaineth. Like a lot of you in the churches, you say you see the truth already. See, that's, I'm good. I don't need that, brother. I'm good. I, I see Jesus. It says your sin remaineth. From there, James chapter, Romans, I'm sorry, Romans 2.13. Romans chapter 2, verse 13. Come on. Romans 2, verse 13. For not hearers of the law are just before God. But the doers of the law shall be justified. But the doers of the law shall be justified. But the doers of the law shall be justified. Now Romans 3, 31. Romans chapter 3, verse 31. Romans 3, verse 31. Do we then make void the law through faith? Do we then make void the law through faith? God forbid. The answer is no. The faith is Christ. Do you make void the law through faith in Christ? The answer is no. God forbid. Yea, we establish the law. Yea, we what? We establish the law. Meaning we do the law. You understand that, brothers and sisters? I pray you all do. So with that, brothers and sisters, we always let you know that we cannot do this truth alone. We need your help in promoting this truth. We need your donations. We need your offerings, okay? Visit our website at www.israelunite.org and visit our video on YouTube. It's www.youtube.com slash Nathaniel7 and learn more information. Brothers and sisters, we need your help. And with that, we say shalom. Shalom, brothers and sisters. For a copy of this show and all other shows, please visit our website at originalroyalty.com.